Come have fun with us and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, I'm Rick. And I'm Anna. And welcome to our Bucket List channel, a channel in which we try to realize the goals and dreams that are on our bucket list. All of them. Yes, today we're working on one of those goals, which is to watch every movie that was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Award from 1927 to 2028. As of now, Anna, we have watched 69 movies, including today's movie, the 1936 Dodsworth. This movie, Anna, is a story of love, marriage, and divorce. While on a grand European tour, recently retired auto magnate Samuel Dodsworth and his narcissistic wife, Fran, discover that they want very different things out of life, which puts a strain on their marriage. This movie, Anna... This is so real. <laughs> yeah. Like, this movie is so painfully real. Mm -hmm. To get to that point in life, you know, where really it's usually hard to change, you know, your lifestyle, your habits, everything else, to realize that your partner, the person right next to you, became a stranger. Yeah, or maybe you never even knew them the way you thought you did, you know? Yeah. And it takes that trip across Europe to realize like, oh wait, who is this person? She's super annoying. This movie, I gotta say, I enjoyed true and true from beginning to end. Me and too. This is not the most elaborate story or intricate uh, plot, but it is real, like you said, so painfully real. And the characters are real and their problems, you can relate, you know. It kind of reminds me a bit of a marriage story, in a sense. Yeah, that's mm. so true. The whole thing is about the characters and their relationship, their struggle. And you feel it the entire time. Like you're watching, it's like watching a, a train wreck. A train wreck, <laughs> yeah, you can't look away. <laughs> the relationship is a train wreck, not yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. It is a great movie. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And one thing that I really liked is the way the characters interact, the actors interacted. Mm -hmm. You get that feeling like between two partners who should be comfortable and familiar with each other, but at the same time, they starting to like fall apart. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's hard to replicate, you know, as an actor, yeah. that feeling. And they did it so well. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed. And this could have very quickly turned into a too long type of movie you know like but it is not you know they find ways to approach the situation and tell the story and uh, make the relationship evolve to the point that when you when the movie started where things would end early into the movie you realize this is not going to work out yeah and of course so you know where things will end but it doesn't feel like all the in between is useless uh, padding Right, exactly. And I like the fact that at some point they put a twist on it that makes you feel like, oh, this is more like a Hollywood romance, you know? But then it immediately turns back to real. Yeah. You know, it immediately makes you feel like, oh, no, it's not. It's, again, very realistic. This was a great movie. I can't wait to see where we'll put it in our ranking uh, at the end of the video because don't forget, we're not only here to review it, but also to rank it. Before we, we move on, I wanted to say one more thing. You said that you knew from the beginning where the movie would, where the story would go. Mm -hmm. I feel like I had a very good idea of the direction of the story, but I didn't expect it to end the way it did. Yeah, no, I it gotta say... It took me by, surpri by surprise. That ending, that ending was not only surprising in some sense, but also so satisfying. Satisfying, yes, oh, totally. That was good. And that line that he said uh, towards the end, what was it? Uh, Love has to end sometime before suicide or something like that. Oh, that stuck with me. I was like, oh, wow. What a line. Whoever wrote that, tip off my hat. Great ending, great movie. But this movie was also recognized at the time for being very good. I have a bunch of information here for you, Anna, that I think you'll find interesting. Oh, let's see. So this is a Samuel Goldwyn uh, production film that came out on September 23rd, 1936. The writer, Sidney Howard, based the screenplay off of his 1934 stage adaptation of the 1929 novel of the same name okay. by Sinclair Lewis. So this is... An adaptation of an adaptation exactly. <laughs> of a novel. It was directed by William Wyler. It stars Walter Huston as Sam Dodsworth, who also played a role 
in the play. Oh, same role? Yeah. I thought it was great. And I gotta say, one of the best moments for me in the movie that really showcased his ability as an actor is towards the end when he's super happy, you know, is in this villa in Italy and for once in his life he's having fun, his wife's not there. And then he gets a call and they say it's from Vienna. He knows it's from his wife. And his demeanor changes like oh, this. Oh, yes. You know, that's true. From the peppy, happy, and then you see just the way his character like crunch and walks, like depressed. Everything changes about You the, feel the heaviness yeah, of it, you know? Without him having to say a word, you realize what he's feeling. And that takes like skills as an actor. Yeah, I thought so too. It was definitely one of the highlights of his character. Mm hmm. Throughout the whole movie, of course, like the way he interacts with his wife uh, to showcase that he does love her, but also she's annoying. That's a hard like push and pull to, to have a character do, but he did it very well. I'm not surprised that they plucked him from the play and put him in the movie too. Also stars Ruth Chatterton as Fran Dodsworth. Now, I have an interesting story here for you, Anna. Okay. About our friend Ruth. So, the director William and Ruth fought bitterly throughout the filming of this movie over the interpretation of Fran. So, Chatterton felt like she should be played entirely as a villain. And while the director thought that, no, the character should have some nuance and people should be able to like in certain ways sympathize with her and at what point it is said that Chatterton slapped Wyler across the face and retreated oh, to the dressing room yeah oh my god I have to say I think she was wrong <laughs> I feel like that's something generally like widely accepted that a relatable character whether good character or bad character is always yeah. better even if it's the villain you have to be able to relate uh, in some kind of way yeah uh, uh, makes them a more three-dimensional character but you know what's also interesting is that according to Marie Astor who's also in the movie we'll talk about her in a second the tension was increased by Chatterton's own desperation at her advancing age so mimicking the character in the movie okay you know who you know sees herself aging in the, in the 40s I assume she's in the movie but Chatterton was at the time of filming and not wanting to age you know wanting to stay young or to portray herself as younger than, being, than she is and so to Astor's she felt like that tension was brought by Chatterton and her into her role yeah I mean I think that's a good thing you know it's good to play a character that you'd be familiar with in this way you know that mm -hmm. you feel like you understand as an actor but it, what's interesting here is that no she didn't want to play her like that she didn't want to play her as a sympathetic real character she wanted to play her as a villain okay so maybe she's refuting you know that character you know she's like this is not me i'm not like her that's interesting that's that's an interesting uh that's just my uh, yeah interpretation of things speaking of maria star of course she's in the movie as edit court right not that uh, present you know she's mainly there in the beginning and towards the end what did you think of her i thought like she was a very good counterpart to uh Chatterton's character mm -hmm. because that's that's what she is yeah much more likable uh, much more likable but also if you think about it from their interaction and their dialogues a character which is very much in the same position as friend but much more self-aware of what is happening to her and in her life and um, having a very different perspective on it. So I really like that, like literally the different perspectives on the same issue. Though she was saying, you know, she was, she had certain things, but you don't feel the same type of bitterness that Ruth's character is displaying towards her aging self. She even makes a joke about it, so. And I wanted to mention also Mademoiselle Maria Uspenskaya, who plays the Baroness von Obsodorf. And I mentioned her for just one reason, uh, we're gonna get into that right now. She was actually nominated for Best Supporting Actress for oh, that role. Really? She is very... It's a five minute role. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seldom in the movie. Like, she's in and out. But, I mean, she was great as the character she, she was, played. She was, yes. But still, so quick. Can still get a nomination out of it. And I feel like in the story as a whole, she serves as the voice of reason of everything. Not only Friends' character but everything that is going on, mm. which I thought was very interesting. Speaking of Academy Award nominations, this movie was nominated for seven Academy Awards. Oh, wow. And won one. So, nominations. It was nominated for Outstanding Production, aka Best Picture, 
nominated for Best Director for William Wyler, Best Actor for Walter Austin as Sam Dasworth. I felt like he was great, so I'm curious to see uh, what are the other actors who won exactly. Uh, like we just mentioned, Best Supporting Actress for Uspenskaya, Best Adaptation for Sidney Howard based on the play by Howard based on the novel by St. Clair Lewis. Best Sound Recording, Thomas T. Malton, and Best Art Direction, Richard Day, which is the one that they won. The movie at the time was a critical and commercial success and was named one of the 10 best movie of the year by the New York Times. It was also one of the top 20 box office film of the year, so the public loved it and the critics loved it. And 1990, Dustworth was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry. And in 2005, Time Magazine named it one of the best 100 movies of the past 80 years. So, great legacy too. So, and of course, we have the ranking coming up. Stay tuned for all of that. But before we get to that, I thought I wanted to ask you, is there any like scenes and particular elements of the movie we haven't talked about that you want to deep dive into? Yes, there is one in particular, and that is the ending scene of the movie. Mm. We talked about it a little, very little in the beginning. I thought that it was great that while the whole movie was very, as we said, realistic, and you kind of felt the direction in which it was going from the beginning. I felt like that ending was very surprising, very unexpected. It felt like as heavy, emotionally speaking, the movie had been up to that point, it would end on that note, you know? Yeah, that he goes that, back to exactly. America with her and he's depressed, but uh, yeah, I he, have to do it. But last minute, he jumps off that boat. Yeah. And he's like, no, I mean, I'm going to live my best life. Five minutes with her in the restaurant and he's like, I cannot do this right. anymore. Because he's now seen the other side. You exactly. Know? He knows what he's missing. He knows what it could be like, what his life could be like. Rather than, you know, they've been married for 20 years. I don't assume that her characteristics are just popping up now. I assume she was always like that. But since he was working, he didn't have to deal with it as often. But now that he has to be with her 24 on 24, he realizes, oh, this is how you are. Yeah. And I don't like it. Even when the movie begins, she says like, oh, now that you're retired, you can make time for me. We can do things together. But it was all about her. Yeah. Now you can spend your money on me. You can spend your time with me. We can do the stuff that I want. But very quickly, you realize, you know, when they're in Europe, they're not actually spending any time together. Yeah. Well, they would have if he had wanted to do the things that she wanted to do. I go to dance every night, go to, I don't know, parties all the time, stuff like this. There's, just, they, they there's just a little bit of that, this. but she didn't want to do what he wanted to do, which was visit, yeah. like, touristy things. Yeah, exactly. And also, like, car factories, yeah. which I understand that she wouldn't want to do that. But there's also the element that she didn't want to just do regular things with him. He was like, meet me at this cafe. And she's like, no, no, this is for, like, peasants, you know? Right. So, she like, wanted She wanted that lifestyle that in her mind she deserved you know i spent 20 years taking care of my husband taking care of my family now i should take care of myself yeah and instead of trying to make th to do things together she just wanted maybe both of them to do what only what she wanted to do and hang out with the people she wanted to exactly, hang out with that too. and at some point it's not even about what they're doing anymore because she kicks him out right. of the trip and you feel like well, I feel like she gets him out of the trip because she quickly realizes that he just doesn't fit in with her new lifestyle. But what I mean, think is he also doesn't fit in with her new friends. Yeah, and she's, exactly. You feel like she's kind of ashamed of him at that beginning part when they're traveling, and so she doesn't want to have to explain to people. Like he's even saying, "Have you been making excuses for me to to your friends?" Yeah? And he doesn't like like he doesn't have anything against her friend, but he doesn't really like them either. And he says something very interesting, which I think hit a nerve to her, is that you think these people are high class. Real high class people wouldn't hang out with us. Right. And so going back to that ending scene, you know, you feel like all that time he never really knew anything else. He thought, okay, this is, this is my wife. I love her, you know, even if she's like this. But then in that time that they spent apart, he had time to realize that, no, there's something better out there. There's someone better for me out there. Mm -hmm. Someone with whom I can be happy doing the things that I like to do 
and sharing them with with that person and yeah. so how can you go back from that definitely enhance on a hopeful note which i also really liked i gotta say the whole ride was a uh, great i would definitely recommend this movie wouldn't you yeah definitely recommend it mm -hmm. but now it is time for us to rank it rank it rank it oh my god As of now, the ranking of the movies from the 9th Academy Award, the 1936 Academy Award, of course. Number one, we have Anthony Adverse. And that is it. <laughs> and that is it. So now we have to plug in somewhere in this list. Dudsworth. I think it's pretty obvious this is our new number one. Yeah, this is our new number one for sure. Yeah. It's not a difficult choice. This movie was, in my opinion, much better than Anthony Adverse. Right. Much better put together mm -hmm. a much more like clear direction in the storytelling. Mm -hmm. And, in my opinion, well-developed characters. It's all about the characters and yeah. they all work. You know, even if Ruth's character is the quote-unquote villain, you feel for her at some times, you know, and there's that, again, push and pull between a character being the antagonist but also it being a three-dimensional character yeah i totally agree i think that good characters make a good movie yeah for the most part so and in this case we had a great characters and great actors to play them yeah so this is an easy number one for me a new list at number two anthony adverse and at number one dodsworth this was it for our review of the 1936 movie dodsworth stay tuned to this channel if you want to see uh, more of these reviews we're gonna keep going until we reach 2028 hit that uh, subscribe button if you want to see any subscribe. of that comment in the comment section below have you seen that word what did you think of that movie do you agree with our ranking like the video if you did and don't forget that this channel is a bucket list channel so we don't only do movie reviews we do a lot of different things here self-growth stuff travel learning new things anime Think about it, it is there. Go look for some of those videos. And don't forget that if you yourself have a goal or a dream that you'd like to realize, take that first step.